mic on. Do you hear me there in the back? Yeah, probably yes, right? Okay. All right, so let's start. Um, thank you everyone for attending to this session. We are almost in family, but we are fine. <laughs> family is always good. Um, so thanks for coming again. Uh, thanks to organizer for picking up my session about architecting and uh, multi-market, multi-language Drupal sites. A deep dive into the backend. So um, please let me uh, uh, tell you what to expect from this session before it really starts. So um, on this session, I'm going to, to explain one approach of many that is available uh, when you are facing a multi-market, multi-language uh, context. So uh, please don't take um, uh, my, our approach as the only one. Probably is the best for you, probably not. It depends on the situation that you are facing. Um, my goal with this session is to list a lot of um, a, a common situations that you will face for sure on your project and how to solve them by following the approach that we followed. Um, and for sure, something to expect is me speaking really fast because we, the time available is, uh, is limited and I would like to cover a lot of ground today. Let me introduce myself. My name is Jose Luis Bellido. I'm software engineer, focus on the backend side of life. Uh, <laughs> I'm Drupal developer for more than 10 years. Um, I would like to think that I am an active committee member. I was part of the, of the organization of the Drupal Developer Days in Seville in 2017 and also some Drupal camps, and especially on uh, the local groups of Seville and Malaga. You can find me uh, there. You have the QR to my um, Drupal orgy profile. You can find me always by uh, DL Bellido. And also in Slack, I'm always available. And I'm really lucky because I'm living on, my, on, the, on the same village that my family is coming from in the south of Spain. So I'm working from them thanks to Cocomore. Um, Cocomore is an agency uh, where most of us work remotely, even though we have offices on Frankfurt, on uh, Poland, on Warsaw, on Spain and Seville. And we, uh, we are specialized on the digital, digital marketing experience. Um, we have an idea department with a, a big background uh, building Drupal sites. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, thanks to them. I'm here because I'm fully sponsored by them. If, if not, probably I wouldn't be able to come here. Um, first, let me give you a little bit of context, uh, context before we really start. So, uh, before this session, we did uh, another one on a DrupalCon Prague last year, 2000. 23, where we did a case study about the project that we um, we did by that time, where we faced this scenario, multi-market, multi-language. But on that session, we covered not uh, we didn't we weren't focused on the technical aspects. Rather, we we went through uh, all general aspects, starting for the uh, from the organizational part one. Uh, to the client relationship. Um, so uh, at the end, the technical uh, aspect of the session was really two slides and um, very, very fast. We realized after the session that uh, this scenario is really common to see. Nowadays, especially that Drupal is more and more used on l big projects uh, that are deployed around the world. So let me expl explain a little bit about the context. Um, the content is the context is that we have a distribution which is deployed independently on several countries around the world, right? So uh, each of those cycles that you see there, they are so they are only a few of them. We have thirteen total. They are independent Drupal installations of the same distribution, right? We control the distribution, but again, they are independent uh, Drupal installations. Uh, they don't share content between installations, right? So the uh, installation of the United States is not sharing the content with the one from Latin America, for instance, but uh, the installation of Latin America has different markets inside it. 
For instance, Latin America is covering several countries, Argentina, Venezuela. So that's the case that we are covering. Others are sub-cases of, um, of the one that I'm talking about. Um, so when you have this kind of context, again, there are several approaches. But uh, what you for sure will face is three kind of scenarios. First one, one market and one language for that market on the same Drupal installation. One market and multiple languages for the same Drupal installation. And at the end, several markets, several languages. If you focus your efforts on the last one, you are covering all of those, right? So you don't need to be worried about the others because our subcases are the of the of the most complex case scenario. Now let's see let's see why and when you should you should follow this approach because it's a risky one. So basically, when you um, have some kind of access restrictions to your content, for instance, on the same Drupal installation, uh, some content should be only available on certain markets, not on all, all of them. You need some kind of control of where is visible what. Um, in addition to that, you need to uh, control what editors are able to manage what content. For instance, um, in the case again of Latin America, uh, you would like to set up your uh, team of editors that are managing only the market of Argentina, not the one from Venezuela, not the one from Colombia. So you need to control that. You need to set up certain restrictions and manage that. It, that's not easy. It, it is not easy. Um, also, you need to cover that, yeah, we are sharing the same Drupal installation, but we, we want to have some differences between us. You need to cover also how to provide them different look and feels, different behaviors um, among the different markets that you have on your site. That's also a goal to, to have in mind. Last but not least, uh, content and users should be shareable among the multiple markets that you have on your, content, on your site, right? For me, that's the key because um, if not, you could just have a multi-site, multi they are independent, but by the time that you need to share content, you need to set up some strategy for that, right? So um, let's first talk about how um, setting the roots of the system, right? If you do this right, you will not have problems with the other challenges that you will, fa you will face on your project. So let's talk about that. I would say that you have four main um, issues to cover as part of your root system. One is how to define what's a market, how do you do it, uh, pros, cons, how to detect on which market you are right now. Again, it's another key topic. Um, how do you set up the user permissions per market? It's uh, the last one. And the last one is how to restrict the language per market. So if you are covering those four, I would say, I will tell you that you can extend it to other cases or for other needs because they will for sure um, make uh, the right direction for you. So let's talk about the market definition. Um, we base everything on domain module. There are, there are another approaches again, but we, after comparing the pros and cons of each of them, we decided to go on the domain module. Domain module at the end is a set of modules that allows you to, to um, coordinate um, a set of affiliated sites on, on your same Drupal installation. Um, at the end, is um, it, it defines what's uh, an affiliate for us is a market, right? And then a lot of integration with this definition, right? Let's see how we can define a market by using domain. So with domain, it, uh, you uh, have a, a, a content entity called uh, domain record. And then you, by, the, by using the, the interface, you can just uh, create several, several uh, domains, several markets for you. 
and each of them are different from each other by host name. The differences, uh, the, the way that is detected on which market you are is based on the host name, right, on the domain. There are other secondary fields, but for you to know, content entity where I can define different domains. All right, I have, I'm having a technical issue. Sorry. All right. Well, we are back. Ooh. <laughs> All right, um, so say that uh, with domain access, it's also a module of domain. Uh, you have additional fields. One is domain access, and the other one is uh, sent to all affiliates. With those two fields and uh, adding them to the, your content types, you are able to uh, to assign one content to what market is going to be available, right? So you are creating an, a product, for instance. I'm creating a new product, and I want to have this product only on South Africa. So by checking that, uh, it is only available in that. Um, it is done by using um, node access and access records. So that's the way how uh, the module is handle these situations. And if not, if you want to send it to all the markets, you just need to click on set to all affiliates. Um, that's only the two first two modules of the main. There are in total Mm, four, seven, if I count it right. Um, for me, the main ones are the ones that you can find them in red. The main config is the one in charge of overriding configuration per market. So in case you need to uh, uh, provide different configuration for only for one market, this is your module. And the main content, what it does is to provide you several views already to handle, um, to detect what content is where in terms of markets. So uh, you can, um, you, you have um, the parameter of the market ID, and then editors can see on one side all the content that is already assigned to, to that uh, market. Next topic is market detection. By default, as we explained before, it's done by domain, uh, so the host name. So it can be different host name, and it can be also subdomains, and it also can be done by not uh, standard ports. But it's really common to see that, um, uh, imagine that we have a one Drupal uh, installation among Europe, um, by default, if we had uh, different domains per country, it wouldn't be a problem. But it's really common to see that you need to distinguish them by country prefix. Having the same host name, but different uh, country prefix. By default, domain doesn't provide that functionality. How we do it? Well, we, have, we are lucky and we have the uh, domain uh, country path. This module, what it does is to it allows you to, on the domain record uh, definition or your market definition, it allows you to put a slash and your country code. And not only that, because it also pro it is also providing the language negotiation plugin to uh, to trim the country prefix when you are on the language negotiation process. So at the end, the URL uh, uh, language negotiation plugin. Um, can follow without knowing about on which country you are. It doesn't matter. You only want to know the, the language. So next topic is about user permissions per market. By default, the module, what it does, it provides a tons of permissions on, 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 Drupal, on, Drupal, on the Drupal user permission page. For each of the content types, you have create new content, delete any content, edit any content plus on assigned domains. Um, the key here is on assigned domains because as we will see later, you assign users to markets. So if we grant access to create new content on assigned domains, for instance, if we create grant content to editor role to uh, articles, create new content on assigned domains, only those editors assigned to one specific domain 
will be able to create articles. If you are in a different domain, you will not be able to, to do that, right? In that way, we can control who is able to do what. In addition to that, you have also several other permissions to the first ones that you see on the left are um, agnostic about the content type and the, on the, the ones on the right, you see um, yeah, who is able to publish on to what domain. As I said before, the assignment of what user is where in terms of markets is done uh, directly on the user, uh, user list. You can just pick what users and then by using the, um, the actions that you see on the bottom, you can apply add editors to the whatever market, right? So in that way, you, you can create your, your sets of editors. Yeah, we talked about uh, before about the additional views that the domain content submodule is providing. One is this one, uh, ad admin content domain editors slash your domain. And there, you, this is the case for Argentina, and here only you see the editors for Argentina. So you can provide to your editing team already a view without any filters, enable, disable. Already here you are the complete list of editors for your market. Same with content. You can provide to your content editing team um, already a, a list without any filters applied to, to see exactly what content is on that market. In this case, all this content is assigned to Argentina. There, in red, we can see that it's also assigned to other markets, but since this is only for Argentina, we only care about that. So, four points about the routing. Language restrictions for market. This is for me the um, it was the the heaviest headache. Um, the need at the end is if you have uh, one Drupal installation in several countries, you need to restrict what language is available on what market. Because, for instance, if you have again in the case of Europe, we we have several markets: one for Spain, one for France, one for Austria. You don't want to have, for instance, German accessible from the Spain market, right? So, and same with if you are on the Austria market, you don't want to have Spanish there. So you can, you need to restrict what languages are available where. How we do it? There are two options. The first one, domain language. Um, domain language, which it provides is for each domain, for each market. You have an additional link where you define what's the default language for that market and what are the allowed, allowed uh, languages for that market only. By that way, you can restrict that. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it work. Why? Because it didn't provide a language negotiation method. So at the end, uh, the system wasn't, wasn't able to detect on what language I, uh, I was on a certain market. For that, we have the domain language negotiation module. Um, at the, on previous versions, it, it had a dependency with the previous module that we saw, but starting from the version 3.0, it is completely independent. It, what it did is just take, um, it took the form, this one is also available in the module, but it is providing the language negotiation plugin we could build at by ourselves, but yeah, it is already there for us, thanks to the community. And the important thing is that you respect the order. So first goes the, the domain language to restrict the languages, then the country path to, to, the, to trim the country, and then we rely on the core uh, URL language negotiation. So after that, everything is like a usual situation. All right, so we have covered already the, um, the common challenges, the, sorry, the roots of the system. We can extend that for other cases with other scenarios that for sure you will face. We did at least. First one, uh, we, we saw before that um, uh, with the country prefix module, you are able to define um, the, the the market detection based on the country prefix, right? In red, you see uh, uh, the country prefix, and in green, you see the language. What happens if we have two markets with only one language 
each of them, and we want to trim the, the, the language, right? We don't want to display for both. We don't want to display, we want to have the final URL that you see on the right. Problem is that we only have one configuration, language negotiation file to handle it. So you are not able to, for two languages, you are not able to remove the, the language prefix. So how we solve it? Um, thanks to the domain config, the one as a module from domain, you are able to override configuration per market level, for instance. So at this point, you are able, you, the only thing that you need to do is to define the configuration and with a certain pattern. It's domain.config.your domain and dot the config that you want to override. If you follow that pattern, you can define overrides for markets. So for instance, on the left, what we see is the language negotiation override for only Argentina, where we are trimming the uh, localized version of Spanish in, in Argentina. And then on the right, what you see is the same configuration, but it will only be taken into account when you are on Venezuela. So in that way, you can define uh, you don't have this issue anymore. Um, yeah, and it can be applied to many other uh, scenarios. Uh, imagine the basic uh, site, uh, the, your, the site of your, the name of your site, the email of the, of the site, it can be done by this way. Well, next topic, um, how we can have uh, different uh, simple, simple uh, sorry, sitemap XML files per market. Um, usually by default, uh, well, we decided to go, for instance, by with simple XML sidebar module. Why? Because it's really easy to use from our perspective. Um, really flexible in case you need to, to extend it. Um, it's fully done by plugins. Uh, it's really well integrated with languages we, we had in the past um, other sites, not multi-market, but multilingual, and it worked perfectly well with languages. And yeah, we had already experience with that. Problems, well, let's continue about uh, talking about a, a little bit about it. By default, you have two pieces uh, with a simple XML site and map. You have on one side, you have the simple, uh, you have the sitemap types. So at the end is how do you create the sitemaps, right? Um, you only need to define basically the URL generators that is being that are going to be used for generating the links of your sitemap. And then what you do, by default, we have those two ones, default H reflang and a specific language. And by default, what you usually see on a common project is only one sitemap uh, of the type of default H reflang where we index everything, right? That's a common scenario, but we are not in the common scenario. We have on a multi-market, multi-language scenario. So how, what do we do? Well, uh, we have some uh, impediments. Um, first, the URL generator um, is not aware about the domain countries. So the links that are created are not the right, not, are not the right ones. We have a lot of 404 links that are not real ones. Second, um, it's not possible to associate a sitemap type to a specific domain. For instance, um, if you want to um, yeah, do some restrictions for any reason to a specific domain, you are not allowed to do that. Third, uh, there is not any mechanism in place to detect automatically what sitemap to use if you are in the same URL. If you are, imagine you are on the, a domain slash AR for Argentina slash uh, sitemap.xml. Uh, um, you want to have it different from slash VE from Venezuela slash uh, sitemap XML. It is the same route, well, not the same route, but at the end, um, you want to, difference that, to, to have some differences in there. Well, how you can approach that? But again, by an extension of the domain module, Domain, simple sitemap. Um, one disclaimer is that you, you need to apply the, um, uh, the patches from that issue that you see on the right, because on that issue is now 
being discussed how to make it compatible with sitemap 4.x version, which is the latest one. So, uh, but applying one of the patches works for us. So, what? Um, so, with this module, we what we do is we change from this perspective, having only two uh, sitemap types, to having one sitemap type per market, right? So, in that way, um, um, you can um, control exactly what uh, is indexed where. Uh, we have also um, we have a field to say this type is only for this market, and also we have a new uh, URL generator which is domain entity URL generator. Uh, with that generator, it takes care about the scenarios of of the domain, so it works perfectly. And yeah, the change if we compare it with the before with the common scenario is now we have multiple multiple site maps per uh, on the site one for each of the markets. If you pay attention to the right side, you will see that the links that are indexes are different because not all the content is available on all the, all, all the markets, right? And also the module is providing a system that um, it, it checks on which, on which country you are, on which market you are, and displays which is the sitemap associated to that. So in that way, you can overcome this situation. Um, other challenges that you will face, but a little bit simpler compared with the ones that we have seen before. The first one is search API integration. So by default, the accesses are controlled because uh, the way it is done, again, with, um, with access records and no access. So, but what happens if you have a search done with search API, which is the common case? Um, search API is not aware about that. We, we uh, Search API doesn't have custom filters to, to basically say only display results for the current market. So w by using the domain access Search API, you have that. The only thing that you need to consider is that you need to index the two fields that we have seen at the beginning, the domain access and the domain send all affiliates. And then you have filters for this thing is to yeah, filter all the content and only uh, I only want the one that it matches with the current market that I'm. So in that way, you have the same search page and the results are different from one market to another. Second, uh, having, we, I, 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 I said it before, having different site uh, basic information per domain. Again, domain config, you provide alternatives and that's on. That's on. Um, uh, different block visibility per market. So. Uh, domain is also inter uh, providing uh, conditions, um, and these conditions uh, um, are on several places of your Drupal site. So one is just when you want to control the visibility of your content, of your block, sorry. So you just can are able to mark this block should be available on this market, not on the other. Um, what happens if you need to if you have the need of applying this content restriction not only to nodes but also uh, to any kind of ent content entity. You have domain entities exactly the same. It's an extension of domain, but uh, it's applied to to every single uh, well to the entities that you want. For instance, a common scenario is to apply to be applied to taxonomies, right? So the detail page of your taxonomy uh, is also controlled by domain. Last but not least, uh, different robot text step per domain. So in case you have the need of, for instance, uh, in our case, it was that we needed to add a sitemap a link in the robot text step for be better uh, CEO um, uh, yeah, reasons. We have to have it differently. Instead of using the hook that is provided by robot text step uh, module, uh, we, we decided to give them full control of the robot tech step per market, so you can use this module from here. And final tips. Um, they are not, on, we didn't talk about them on the presentation, but this is like my, um, yeah, my suggestion for you in case you follow this path. Try to reduce the differences among the markets as much as possible. Even though you have tools in place to difference 
to make uh, something different from one to another. But the problem here is the dependencies between the configuration, right? So as you start having different content types from one market to another, you have you starting. You don't want to have that. You uh, they should be more or less coordinated, right? Make everything configurable, even though you think that is going not going to change. It will change because new markets are being added to your Drupal installation, and at some point. Some of them have a need that you didn't de detect before. If you have it everything configurable, you just need to mark a tick somewhere, configure a string somewhere. Don't take anything for granted. Before you start doing your uh, own custom module to extend domain, check the already existing ones. Collaborate with the community. There are tons of modules already existing. Some of them are ported to Drupal 9, 10, others not. So it's a great opportunity for you if you have the need of having them running on your project. Um, and last, um, yeah, make sure that you contribute back to your fixes, new modules, etc. Um, it's really uh, pleasant to see that there is a lot of things already available for us in the community. Thanks for the people that is working really hard to make them public. So don't let's don't uh, let's don't uh, forget about it and let's join forces. And thank you very much. And thanks to the sponsors for making this uh, amazing event happening. Thank you. <laughs> now time for questions. Mercy, please. <laughs> Have mercy. Hi. Hi. Um, uh, the first question. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, the first question: How uh, how do you like to deploy string translation because they are not part of the configurations and clients some like often don't like to do anything like they send you an Excel with like a bunch of columns like put it to the side. You mean how we import translations? Yeah, how do you like to do it? Because uh, yeah. they're, they're like... All right, yeah. So translation is a nightmare, <laughs> right? Um, what we do is um, we are as a, the, the scenario that we are starting is we have a distribution, right? So this distribution have country modules and custom modules for this distribution. First, we are providing a config translation for each of the languages that we are supporting. So when we do a new installation, if that installation has already the language that we are providing, the strings are imported. Same with the fixed strings, right? So we are managing that in that way. Um, um, customizations for markets. Uh, it's really common to see, for instance, in the case of Latin America, even though it is Spanish, they have localized version of Spanish. So we used um, language hierarchy module where um, we, def we are providing the translations for neutral Spanish. And then in case they have any need of overriding them for your, their localized version, they can do it. But that's a different case. Did I answer your question? Yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks for your talk. It was very interesting uh, to me. Like I was building the same things in a different way. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was wondering uh, like how how much time it took to set up the system. All right. Yeah, in total, um, we we and the, if you want all the details, I encourage you to see the our session from DrupalCon because there is where we define how we did the continuous rollouts because at the end it was a migration from another system to this new one system right so basically the approach that we did is we started with one uh, again we we are de de deploying uh, building a distribution at the beginning the distribution worked only for one market one language then we release another version 
on which it worked for multiple markets, multiple languages, with a lot of hook updates to make already existing sites work. So um, that's uh, because we have different markets. Again, we started with the United States. This is the case. But the, on the next wave of markets that we have to deliver, we, we already had a situation of multiple. So the, we changed it, we introduced domain, we did the changes, and then we released a new version of this distribution, which uh, took into account this new scenario. And then all others came after. Uh, once that you control and you are making sure that it, it is working for the last scenario, multiple market, multiple languages, uh, others is really easy to be done because at the end you need to just import the, the translations and make them any customizations that they need. But it's much easier. The huge step is going from one market to multiple markets and the language restrictions. That was the huge step. About timings, um, it took us uh, more or less uh, six months to, to have the first case scenario with all, because we, the site has tons of functionalities, not only the ones that we have talked here, but um, it was more or less six, six, as far as I remember. We, we talked about that on the session, on the Drupal concession. But making it multi-market, multi-language, it took more, more or less four months. Not fully working on that, but in times of release one, release two, more or less four months. Thank you also for your talk. Um, Thank you. Again, like the colleague said, I, I also did the same <laughs> as you with the main modules. Let's talk. <laughs> and yeah, so we faced the big problem with uh, country pass because our client wanted to have multiple languages per one domain. Mm -hmm. And also the country pass or like this language prefix suffix would be like first and then minus and the domain uh, yeah, identifier. Have you also t did something in this way or like? Yeah, we have the case of, we have one of the installation, it is on Nordics. So on that installation, we have the Nordic, Nordic countries, Norwegian, uh, Sweden, Finland. And there, the country code was, for instance, for Norway was NO. And also the language was NO. And country path made that wasn't able to uh, to do the job. Um, we were lucky because uh, on that situation, we um, we only are covering Nor Norwegian as a language, so we could we were able to to string the language. In your case, if you have the language on the path, is difficult because you may see uh, you have probably you you seen how it's done by the regex. Uh, on the on the country path path, but I saw the problem. But we were lucky to overcome that by just streaming the language. So no, no, I don't have an answer for you. And then one more answer or question regarding the domain access for entities. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's a good idea to have domain access per paragraphs? So we use. Uh, <laughs> so we we have, we have the uh, domain access on the node itself and also on the each paragraph that was inside. Yeah. Um, luckily for me, I wasn't all that situation as well. We only control the access to the node or to taxonomies, but not we are not going into the paragraph level. Um, I don't think how it would work, honestly. Uh, yeah, we did it. It works, but of course not. Super perfect, but just I wanted to know, like from the expert, yeah, like, uh, I, I, at all. <laughs> I'm a survivor. <laughs> um, um, I, I mean, I am. I'm curious about how you face it up because um, on, on on one point of the project, we had to decide if we went through symmetric translations or asymmetric. We decided to go to symmetric because for the markets. It wasn't, and they didn't have any benefit of having them asymmetric. So we were lucky, and they are using the same paragraphs. They are translating them, and the visibility is the same among the same content uh, applied to different 
uh, different countries and different languages. So we were lucky. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Have you seen some drawbacks with, by this choice of having a single database for multiple markets, for example, performance, uh, mm -hmm. the, all these uh, domain modules? And then yeah. the other question, since you said you you probably also did this because you could share users and content, mm -hmm. uh, how would you do the same between different uh, markets in the future if you need yeah all right so in terms of drawbacks or things to you that probably can be really improved i would say that well um first is um when you work with domain you need to add uh, to the catchy context you need to distinguish them by domain so once that you display a content on one single market it is cash so that way you have some kind of backup right in terms of performance um, what is really a little bit really uh, performance con consuming is the um, language uh, 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 the language allowed per market because it checks all the configuration and only when the language is there it, it, it decides if uh, it should be removed or not I've seen a bottleneck there but to be honest, um, um, time spent on fixing it and how it affects to the end users, uh, it, it wasn't worth to, to spend a lot of time to improve it because the performance was good enough. But that's the only thing that I would tell you. If I would face this uh, project again, probably I would try it with having um, um, a content uh, repository uh, and also a content a user repository where you centralize all the logins and then child sites that consume that content. But probably we will face other issues. Since we, we didn't have the need of sharing content between different Drupal installations, that's why we decided to go with domain because of the balance of the effort doing this extra site versus domain and so that's why we did it on the way. Thank you. I have one more question. Just uh, you showed the domain records, and mm -hmm. they were all with real one on the domain. So you didn't use different domain names for different markets. Right. Okay. So uh, do you mean having different domains pointing to the same market? No, it was like, for example, Nestle Professionals Latam mm -hmm. dot com yeah. so AR. But for example, have you had AR dot Nestle Professionals Latam dot com? So like the the domain name itself is different for yeah. markets. So as we, uh, I think it's really at the beginning. Okay, so by default, you you distinguish them by host name. So, and you can mix the way that is detected. So you can have some markets that with the different domains and then one with using the country path. Yeah, that's like then the question. If you had to use it. No, we didn't have that situation. No. Or all of the markets are having different domains. That's the case of uh, Central Europe. We, we have an installation for Czech Republic, Hungary, and Slovakia, and they have different domains. And then we have the case of Latin America where they have the same domain slash the country prefix. But this European one still uses one instance of Drupal. Yeah. Then my question, are you using CDN also in front? Uh, no. 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 Ah. Because in my case, we also have different host names for uh -huh. the same domain. And the front page, because it has just slash, uh, it's always confused in CDN between domains. Uh, yeah, we, again, I guess we were lucky we are not mixing both kinds of detections. We have one or another. So uh, in case of Latin America, we, we don't have a slash. Without anything, we have a slash CL. Mm -hmm. That's our default market. And if you try to access it, you go direct to, redirect it to a slash CL. But yeah. Okay, great. 
Yeah, one more question. I saw that the main module is still in beta, so did yeah. that cause any problems? And were until you waiting to until, some issues to get resolved? Until now, well, of course, as any other uh, module, we had to apply some uh, some patches, but I would say no big problems. It it works straightforward for our use case. Um, the project is, is two years old um, until now. Let's continue like that. We didn't have any issues with that. Uh, you are right. But probably, um, I don't know how many people are working. I, at least I know one person is the one that you see on all the issue queues. Probably um, they need help. But to be honest, I don't see another option. I know that other people have done these kind of approaches by using groups. But I don't know how it is done, the market detection on groups. If you are able to detect different groups by host name as well, I don't know. So that, that's the only thing. Other controlling the accessibility of content, I think you can do it, and the users as well. But the only thing, that's the only thing that I'm not sure how it's done. OK, so thank you very much for your questions. And yeah, see you around. Thank you. Oh, we did it on time. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. <laughs> Unexpected. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yeah. <laughs>